Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you all for uh, coming in this evening. I, I think the snow has gone away, yes? Let's, let's hope so. Although, for, for how, many people, how many people can raise their hand here to indicate this was the first time they ever saw snow today? <laughs> <laughs> but but on, only only for a short time. Except for Dr. Zarka, right? What was this similar? Lighter, yeah. She was in Denver, so <laughs> more more real snow. Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Tom Patterson. I'm the director of international education here at Johnson County Community College. And it is, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this evening's final lessons learned, which will be presented by our uh, visiting uh, Pakistani professors. Uh, although, even though that's the title, I think there will be more lessons learned as we go on, because I think the work that we have done will continue. Uh, the work that uh, you're going to hear about tonight uh, from our visiting Pakistani faculty is part of a United States uh, State Department grant uh, that Johnson County Community College has received to work with uh, Sucker Institute of Business Administration in uh, Sucker, Pakistan. This is the second such grant that we have been working on, and this one is focused on strengthening U.S. and Pakistani faculty connections. Uh, they have been uh, working in four academic areas, distance education, assessment, learner center, center uh, pedagogy, and uh, early childhood education. And you're going to hear from them about the work that they have done with regard to the goals of the grant. And the two main goals were, number one, to strengthen people-to-people -people and institutional ties between JCCC and Sucker IBA through a mutual sharing of information and experiences within Pakistani and U.S. higher education. And secondly, um, Educate Sucker IBA faculty and staff on best practices in identified areas, the four areas I mentioned of interest, through in-person and virtual exchanges and aid, and Sucker IB faculty and staffs establishing professional networks of U.S. Uh, colleagues. So they will be talking about this, these two, in addition to other things. Um, I want to uh, thank the United States uh, Department of State uh, for this grant, we have two representatives here this evening, Mr. Richard Boyum from the uh, Department of State University Partnerships. Uh, he's the coordinator for Afghanistan and Pakistan. Would you say hello? To <laughs> and Ajay Rao from the Department of State uh, Pakistan uh, desk office. Uh, two uh, people uh, that were uh, essential to putting this together uh, from the grant office here, Melinda Ryan-Smith, Director of Grants Leadership and Development, Melinda. <laughs> and her, uh, her uh, uh, fellow grant worker, Dr. Anthony Fanari, uh, the grants professional. I think uh, Dr. Fanari was not able to join us this evening. Um, we have um, a number I'm going to introduce. Uh, we have uh, from Johnson County Community College, each, each of the visiting Pakistani faculty was assigned to work with a mentor in the particular areas that I mentioned. And I'm going to introduce all of them, but first, uh, there were four secondary mentors that assisted them. And th those were uh, uh, Professor Dave Krug, 
Thank you, Dave. Uh, Jeffrey Merritt, Director, Academic Achievement Center. Uh, Dr. Vince Miller, Dean of Academic Support. And Dave Ellis, a counselor. From, uh, from the office where I work, International Education, a very big thank you to Jeanette. Jeanette, stand up. Jeanette Jasperson. <laughs> you can see she, uh, she was the go-to person for our visiting Pakistanis. Uh, as you hear, Zarka, everything. <laughs> yes. And uh, certainly an important part of, us, of establishing ties between faculty and, and staff from different institutions. Okay, now I'm going to um, introduce our visiting uh, professors and uh, the mentor, because that was, that was part of this grant was uh, we did teleconferencing uh, with Pakistan uh, last semester to set up the work they were going to do, and then each one of them that came here worked with uh, a mentor in the academic area. And so they are uh, visiting Professor Imra Khan, who worked in the Office of Outcomes Assessment with uh, Dr. Sherry Barrett, the director. And there's uh, Dr. Zarkabano, the Math Resource Center, with Brett Cooper, the director of the Math Resource Center. Dr. Fida Chang, uh, Distance Education, work with Dr. Ed Lovett, Director of Education Technology Center. And visiting Professor Sirhan Fatuma Memon with Dr. Catherine Byrne, Associate Professor, Writing Center Director. And visiting Professor Shiroz Noor, Early Childhood Education, and she, where's Shiroz? Shari, Shiroz was working with uh, Dr. Ekaterina Streklova-Hughes from UMKC, Assistant Professor in Early Childhood Education. Okay. Um, and then uh, we have visiting Professor Ishfaq Abbasi, who's joining us uh, by Zoom. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Abbasi had to return to Pakistan. Sadly, his father uh, passed away uh, last week. But he is joining us uh, through uh, the wonders of Zoom. Uh, and he was working in English distance education with uh, Dr. Keith Geeky, right back there, the chair of the English department. Here. And finally, uh, when we can begin, uh, we have uh, unfortunately, uh, we have two visiting uh, administrators here from Sucker IBA. Uh, Director uh, Siddiqui uh, is a little under the weather. He uh, has not been able to join us this evening. Uh, but we have uh, Dr. Sher, who is uh, the, um, let me got to get this right here. He is the director of the Quality Enhancement Cell. Yes? And so um, our first uh, would let me invite all of uh, all of the uh, visiting uh, Pakistani faculty to please go up front, take a take a take a chair. And Mr. Abbasi will be speaking first. So, uh, Mr. Abbasi. Uh, please, yes. please begin whenever you're ready. Okay.
Okay, uh, Dr. Tom, am I audible to all of you? Okay, so in the name of Almighty Allah, who is uh, the gracious and the most merciful. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Tom Peterson. And uh, thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I feel a little bit unfortunate to address uh, this uh, very respectable, uh, respectable gathering uh, virtually. Unfortunately, as Dr. Tom told you, that I had to return back uh, due to sudden demise of my father. Uh, actually, this whole idea of uh, lessons learned is uh, due to the cooperation of uh, the U.S. State Department, Johnson's County Community College, and uh, no doubt, Sakkar IBA. So uh, we are really very much thankful to all these uh, three uh, organizations who facilitated us that uh, to learn something wonderful. Uh, I would request you all, excuse me if I go a little bit uh, haphazard, if actually I have been uh, under the stress uh, for this unfortunate uh, condition of mine. And then I have been awakened uh, since uh, uh, morning. It's uh, early morning here. Uh, it's a quarter past 6 a.m. And uh, I, I will try my, to my level best to do the best with my presentation. Uh, I will be talking about uh, the activities throughout our uh, stay during uh, our visit there. And then I will focus on the, what the lessons we have learned from there. Though the lessons we have taken with us, uh, these are uh, enormous enough to be uh, concluded within this uh, short span or period of uh, 10 minutes. But even then we will try to focus on the main ideas which are going to be implemented at, uh, back in uh, sector IBA, which is, as Dr. Tom told you, which is the uh, main goal of the uh, grant as well. So I was here uh, with uh, Professor Dr. Keith Geeky uh, as she is my primary mentor and uh, we were working on English through online or in distance education. So uh, I had uh, one uh, primary mentor that is Professor Dr. Keith Geeky and then I had the secondary mentors, uh, Dr. Ad Lovett, then Dr. Dev Krug and uh, Dr. Jeff Merritt. So these uh, three people helped me a lot uh, in my uh, exposure towards this new field. Let me tell you one thing very uh, honestly that uh, before uh, joining Johnson's County Community College as the visiting faculty member from Sakkar IBA, I had no idea about this uh, uh, online learning sort of thing. But uh, after attending this uh, uh, session there, I have uh, got some good uh, idea about how the concept of uh, distance education works and specifically for English courses. So uh, one of the best and practical example of uh, this learning is that uh, thanks to uh, the team who was with me, my respectable mentors, uh, with with the help of whom I am able to connect uh, from Pakistan at my home. I am at my home and connected on Zoom. So this is uh, the first ever thing which I am doing from Pakistan, uh, from my home, connected through a software which I learned during my stay there. So I will be talking about these activities. So uh, throughout this stay, I was connected with uh, uh, Dr. Geeky as uh, my primary mentor, and we were involved in uh, uh, composition two a course, which uh, she was teaching in Johnson's County Community College there. And uh, I was here doing her to learn the best practices uh, how she is managing the online learning aspect of uh, this whole thing. Uh, then uh, I was also, uh, thanks to uh, Dr. Geeky, she offered me when I, I, I requested her that, is it possible that we are going to have a Pakistani students uh, uh, as the volunteers to participate in this uh, international composition two course. So she uh, was very much generous and uh, uh, facilitating. She agreed and then she let me know that uh, we have uh, we have 
some Russian students to join, some Moroccan students to join, and then we had the Pakistani students to join. So this whole concept of uh, uh, online learning, English through online, uh, was a, a very much, uh, a, a, through this opportunity, was a really very practical for me because I was practicing what I was supposed to do when once I am back in Pakistan. So the first activity which I was doing there, shadowing Dr. Geeky in her composition class, and uh, thanks to her that she has revolutionized uh, with her methodology, my understanding of composition too. Uh, earlier, I had some different concepts of teaching composition courses, but the, with the uh, exposure to her uh, classes, I have got the idea that how it is going to work there. And then uh, I had a wonderful opportunity of dealing with international students. We had uh, five students from Russia who joined uh, uh, us uh, uh, through Zoom software, and we, uh, Dr. Geeky conducted their class, and I was observing that how this thing is going to happen. And then some of the Moroccan students joined us and uh, we, throughout uh, this, uh, these previous two months, we were engaged with conversation with them in International Composition 2 class. And then we had the Pakistani students and for Pakistani students, we had in every week two uh, sessions of Zoom video conferencing with them and then they were doing all the activities of the Composition 2 class. Uh, later on, uh, this uh, all idea of uh, 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 online learning for that, uh, I had to get some help whenever I had the confusion, thanks to Dr. Lovett that he was always facilitating and he was available for me. And I was engaged in having, uh, getting some technical support and ideas about this Zoom software. And then the other available softwares, other available tools, which is the technical part of this all. And uh, Dr. Lovett uh, helped me a lot in this. And then uh, thanks to the the management of JCCC and then Dr. Lovett that they provided us an opportunity to join uh, a training uh, course for desire to learn, which is the LMS software used in Johnson's County Community College. And we learned, uh, I teach, uh, uh, we learned this all through I teach course, which is the staff development, uh, developmental course. And then the other thing which I was engaged in, actually the focus was that, okay, English. So English has, a, as you all know, the, the skill oriented thing. So I was uh, learning something in writing from Dr. Keith Geeky that how this all is going to happen. And then in reading, I had to uh, take the help of uh, Dr. Uh, Jeff Barrett, who uh, helped me a lot, uh, giving me the idea that how the reading center is going to work and how these things are. Actually, we do have our uh, reading uh, lab there back in Sakhar IBA, but the concepts which we, uh, I learned from uh, the Academic Achievement Center there, the, uh, the things which we learned, they helped me a lot. So I have been engaged with uh, 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 Professor Merritt for this all uh, exposure about the Reading Center. And then the last thing which we were involved in, these were the attending different conferences. We had been to Orlando for that online learning consortium, the uh, a huge international conference where we got the opportunity of uh, learning something uh, regarding their sources. Then there were different other presentations. Uh, let me tell you one thing of the beauty of attending the online classes uh, with Dr. Geeky. Uh, I, I was just wondering that how much influential and how much uh, extraordinary effort she was putting in managing the time, different time zones. We had Russian students with a huge time difference. We had Moroccan students with huge time difference. And then we had the Pakistani students. And then we have the Chinese students as well, the, to whom I was not able to get connected. But again, Dr. Geeky was doing it all. So uh, one most uh, very interesting thing which I want to share with you all here is that once we were there in Orlando conference uh, and there were different presentations on different issues of uh, issues in online learning and the students' uh, teacher interactions. After every presentation, I was talking with uh, my mentor and I was uh, asking her that, uh, are these the issues which these people are talking about? Because she was doing and managing in a wonderful manner back in Johnson's County Community College that I was feeling like that uh, they have not, uh, the, the presenters in Orlando conference I was having idea, I may be wrong, that they are not putting in the efforts which uh, Dr. Geeky was putting in and 
these to me were not the issues which they were talking up talking about so this was what which we learned uh, uh, i was engaged in and then what are the take home lessons out of this all that uh, the first most important thing which is uh, one of the major goals that uh, developing people to people connections uh, uh, through this uh, uh, grant of his us state department thanks to dr geeky thanks to international office and thanks to the management of uh, johnson's county community college that they have uh, I accepted our request that they are going to offer a composition one credit course for our students in the spring 2017 and the 20 students of our institute are going to get registered and they are going to get credit so the all all, all the management level issues have been discussed and i am really very much thankful to my mentor who was really very much a, uh enthusiastic about this all and then this zoom video lecturing which we have learned so uh, this is a wonderful tool through which uh, we can have uh, wonders because uh, you know we are based in sakar and we have uh, seven different community colleges at different locations of uh, our uh, uh, province so this zoom software or this uh, exposure in uh, at johnson's county community college is going to help me our uh, our visiting faculty who my colleagues who are there in johnson county community college that we will be doing this with our don uh, with our community college professors from sakar idea through this zoom software so this is a wonderful tool which we have done and then a video recording of lectures for distance education this concept has been introduced to me by uh, dr dab krug professor krug is a wonderful uh, resource which i have observed for uh, video recording sessions and this Uh, i i thought that it is going to work for our every management course or english course which we are going to offer back in sakar ib for the students who are not able so the concept behind is that our regular classes whosoever the faculty member is going to volunteer for any of the video recording options for their whole semester so this concept uh, dr krug uh, has given us and i really appreciate that this we are going to discuss back in sakar ib for this and then the reading center introducing modern gadgets shorty i had a uh, different meetings with uh, 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 jeff merritt and he was very really very much uh, uh, encouraging to me with the concept of introducing because reading you know is the major problem in english language or in any of the language students uh, rarely take interest in reading so with the introduction of modern gadgets of kindle or any of the tablets the software within the tablet we are going to do this uh, back in sakar ib with the reading center where we have the major major uh, objective of bringing students back towards the reading skill and then uh, i was uh, i have learned something uh, uh, very exciting uh, in developing course outlines for basic english courses and for the developmental students you know major chunk of our students uh, being based in the rural part of uh, pakistan major chunk of our students comes from the underprivileged society where they have not got the, the proper and enough education to prove whatever the certificate they have with so uh, i had this discussion with uh, holly melkward thanks to my uh, mentor she connected me with her and then we had the discussions for this all and the she uh, gave me the concepts that how at uh, johnson's county community college they have developed the the course outlines uh, keeping in view the needs and the requirements of the students and the standards of the college or the university level uh, courses so uh, this is all which we have though we have learned many more things but uh, due to the time uh, restriction i am not able to talk a lot about all these things so uh, this is what which we have been learning and i think that uh, uh, i i am going to use one analogy to end my presentation here that uh, here in pakistan it is early morning and it is the sun is going to rise and uh, back in johnson's uh, back in kansas it is uh, already the night or the sun has already set there so what i am going to use is an analogy that once we were there uh, in at the johnson's county community college the all the uh, uh, lack of uh, knowledge sort of element 
has the sunset there being at Johnson's County Community College. And once I am here, the uh, power of resources, the power of uh, knowledge, and uh, the power of uh, uh, networking, through networking, we are able to have the sunrise of sharing best practices of uh, Johnson's County Community College back in Pakistan with the students of, of Pakistan and the faculty members of uh, specifically Sakhar Arabia. So this is all from my side. Uh, if uh, there are any questions, questions are welcome. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Abbasi. We're, we're going to let everybody give their presentations first, and then we'll take questions from, from the audience uh, at that time. Okay. Thank you very much to giving me this opportunity to share my learning with you all. My name is Imran Khan and I'm Control of Examination at Sakhar IBA. Currently I'm working in Outcome Assessment Department of Johnson's County Community College since August of this year. First take a look to the contents of my presentation. I'm going to discuss here lessons learned in outcomes assessment, taking lessons home to apply in Pakistan, and my social learning in Overland Park and other cities of the USA. I learned that the assessment of a student's learning outcomes should be faculty driven. This means that assessment is in initiated, designed, conducted, analyzed, interpreted, and acted upon by faculty. The role of management should be as facilitator. I also experienced some misconception among the faculty and management about assessment. And after this semester, I can say that these misconceptions are common in many institutions in the US and Pakistan. Especially, faculty have fears about assessment and interpretation of resulting data. So I am very much clear that this is not the assessment of faculty. Assessment activities are driven by a desire to determine how will students achieve learning outcomes and by a commitment to continuous improvement in curriculum and in teaching strategies. Again, it is not assessment of faculty. It is assessment of student learning. I also learned that the academic program review, planning, and development allows program faculty and staff to lead a purposeful and continuous cycle of improvement through two related processes. Number one, the comprehensive academic program review, and number two, annual planning and development process. The comprehensive academic program review is completed by programs faculty every three years. During the intervening years, on an annual basis, programs complete and abbreviated version of this process with the focus on monitoring and updating goals and tracking of trends in the program. The annual process is called the annual planning and development process. I also learned about the software supporting program review, Zytress. And Zytress is a web-based system to manage accreditation and program reviews. As you know all, campus-wide strategic planning, accreditation, assessment, and program review are important interrelated functions of academic planning. So I took advantage of my learning and with the help of my mentor, 
Dr. Sherry Barrett, uh, I developed a new vision, mission, and learning outcomes of Sakar IBA and IBA community colleges. I'm going to discuss these with Director of Sakar IBA and Director of Quality Enhancement Cell, Dr. Sher, in the presence of my mentor tomorrow. I was part of a mock accreditation visit of a community college in Kansas as an observer. During this visit, I met with faculty, staff, students, higher management, and member of the Board of Trustees. It was an amazing experience of learning for me. And I found that many of the challenges that are facing the students, staff, and faculty are common in Pakistan and the USA, such as teaching methodologies and student retention. For learning American culture and history, I have been attending two history courses in this semester. These courses not only helped me to learn about teaching and learning environment of the college, I also learned about founding fathers of the US, the American Civil War, the human rights movement, differences between southern and northern regions, and I learned that American society has continued to develop over the last several centuries. And if we compare history of Pakistan with the history of the USA, Pakistan is a very young, just a 70 years old toddler. But I'm proud to say that on the other hand, the Indus Valley civilization is one of the oldest civilization on earth. Fortunately, I had the opportunity to visit the East Coast, the West Coast, and several cities in the Midwest. Based on my personal experiences, I am very much inspired by Midwestern values and culture. People in the Midwest are hospitable, friendly, and helpful. Sports are important aspect of American culture, so I tried to learn about sports such as baseball and American football. I attended a Royals baseball game and a couple of Cavaliers baseball games, and I watched several games of Sporting Kansas City. And now I can understand and enjoy the game of baseball. <laughs> However, it is still quite difficult for me to understand and enjoy American football. <laughs> so I will stick with Pakistani football or soccer. I also tried to learn about religion practices of American people. I attended services in different churches and talked with Pastor David. He's my friend and husband of my mentor. Uh, I, I, I think you, you can see him. He's in the center with traditional uh, topi, sindhi topi, and a jerk. And uh, I discussed with him important celebrations such as Eid days and Thanksgiving day. We talked about Abraham, peace be upon him, Moses, peace be upon him, Jesus, peace be upon him, and Muhammad, peace be upon him. And I found many, many, many communities in Christianity and Islam. This is a pictorial visit. In first picture, uh, my mentor is giving me gift on uh, my birthday. <laughs> And my birthday is on 10th August. On next year, you may are welcome to send me <laughs> gift. On second picture, me, David, and Sherry, we are watching uh, Royals game. And on the right hand side, I am meeting with King and Queen. <laughs> uh, in the bottom, uh, left bottom picture, uh, Professor Sherry. Sherry is here, and she took us to visit uh, of Kansas City, Missouri, on our first weekend in August. Uh, in in the picture, uh, middle in the bottom, we visited University of Kansas for orientation, and on the right hand side, uh, on the bottom, we we were invited by Steve on International Peace Day, and we visited there, 
and attended his classes and saw the beautiful campus of Park University. In the middle, uh, we are at uh, State Department in Washington, D.C. while we, we were there to attend a peaceful peace building conference. And in the last picture, I'm with Liz. She's sitting here. She's my colleague, and she's my friend. She's my sister. <laughs> I learned two big lessons from my whole academic and social learning, and I'm going to share these with my family, friends, and colleagues in Pakistan. Number one, American people integrate education in every aspect of life. I found libraries and classrooms in convention centers, visitor centers, museums, parks, and even in banks. And I found people reading books in gymnasiums, airports, buses, parks, and train stations. Number two, diversity and inclusion. At policy level, I learned about ADA and open access for community colleges students in my lens training. And I observed that the infrastructure, walking paths, elevators, even signboards are readable for people with disabilities. I not only observed these things, I also took pictures, made, made videos, and talked with people. And some of them emailed me about their experiences. I'm going to share these two pictures. There is one student studying at Monument Memorial, Indianapolis, and another student studying at train station of Stanford. Uh, on, on first picture on the left hand side, I found Holy Book Purana Park in Brel, in community center of Cary, North Carolina. And on right hand side, signboard at St. Louis Airport. And I, I found these kind of signboards in all hotels, airports, stations, libraries, museums. Thank you very much. Um, I also want to say Jazakallah. Thank you is a very small word for your hospital, what you give me respect, love, care, so Jazakallah. Good evening, everyone. My name is Zakia Banu, and I am one of the six visiting scholars from Pakistan. Um, I, I worked here in the Math Resource Center with Brett Cooper, and um, I've, I've really enjoyed my time here. I've learned lots of things, and I'm, I'm going to talk about those things in detail right now. So uh, first, I would speak a little bit about Math Resource Center. So Math Resource Center is located in um, CLB 2112, in the heart of Math Division. It is devoted to serving JCCC Math students. And uh, the services are on drop-in drop basis. <clears throat> this is uh, a schematic diagram of uh, Math Resource Center. These are some of the services that MRC provide for students. And these are some of the services that MRC provide to faculty. And um, apart from these uh, services and these things, I have learned in detail about uh, overall functioning of MRC in particular, sorry, in particular about these things. Uh, how uh, MRC is staffed, 
what are its hours of operations, what's its uh, infrastructure, what resources are available, uh, how does tutors are being hired in MRC, services, budget, role and responsibilities of a tutor, <clears throat> tutor scheduling, log keeping, program review, uh, and review seminars. So uh, before coming here, when I came to know that uh, I'm going to USA, to JCCC College, and I'll be working in uh, Math Resource Center, and I, I knew nothing about MRC, uh, except for uh, what Brad told us uh, via a video conference. So from that video conference, what I perceived about uh, MRC is that uh, since it's providing extra help to students, so the first question that came into my mind was why extra help? And then I thought that tutoring would be like spoon feeding. And the other, <laughs> the other, other perception that I had about MRC, uh, about tutoring was that it would be just about answering the question and nothing at all. And I was also fearful of tutoring because teaching is different. I've been a tutor for two and a half years, but I've never tutored. So I had this fear that um, if I'm going to be a good tutor or how I'm going to do that. <clears throat> so um, after getting here and after spending a couple of weeks in MRC, my perception about all these things changed. Uh, to the question that why extra help, I think uh, our students are a member of our community and it is our job to help them out. And uh, to my perceptions about tutoring that it would be like spoon feeding and it would be about uh, just answering questions, I came to know that it's, it's quite different. Tutoring is helping a student believe that he can do it, uh, helping a student to overcome his math anxiety, helping a student to appreciate mathematics. And about, about the fear of uh, tutoring, uh, uh, I, I, I remember first day when Brett asked me to tutor, I was like, no, I, 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 I'm not going to do it. But he said, it's, it's a good one, you're fine. And uh, then I start do, started doing it, and it, it uh, kept on decreasing, but it was still there. And uh, I also talked uh, this fear with uh, Professor Kathleen as well, and she also gave me some good uh, guidelines, and she really boosted my uh, confidence in tutoring. So thank you, thank you to both of you. So this is uh, what I have learned is philosophy of MRC. Uh, it's all about supporting the inst uh, instructional staff in their methods. It's about creating independent learners. It's about uh, making the students or tutees appreciate mathematics. It's about active learning. It's about helping students overcome their math anxiety. And um, now this is a funny situation. <laughs> so um, I remember Brad was sharing this with me that uh, many of many a times, especially. Uh, when students have a text the next hour, or when they have exam the next day, they would just come in and ask for you that you just help me to get a straight A, or you just help me go through all the syllabus. And what he said to me is, now both of us know that we, we cannot do it, but okay, let's, let's try it. So, <laughs> so this, is, this is a really good thing that they never, uh, never say no to anyone. They, they really help even if it's, if it's too late. 
Um, my learning about tutors is tutors are integral part of MRC and it's okay to not know everything and to ask for help whenever needed from other tutors. I remember Professor Kathleen saying to me that uh, it's the student whom we have to save and let, let us not our titles deceive us. Let's Let's just be straightforward. I remember Brett telling me that, uh, that uh, a tutor should be humble enough to, know, uh, uh, to accept that he cannot answer a, a certain question and ask for, ask for help. It's, it's a plus to refer to a book or any resource that is needed. And I've seen that uh, MRC has a very diversified group of uh, tutors. They are from all ages, and I believe two of them are sitting here. <laughs> and they are, uh, they are from all ages, they are from all ethnic groups, um, they are from different parts of the world. I've met a tutor from Pakistan too. Uh, I've met a tutor from India. <laughs> and uh, I think Bifan is from China, or? Yeah. So, so MRC has a diversified group of tutors. And like Imran said that JCCC uh, values diversity and inclu uh, inclusiveness. And this is what I have learned about the qualities of a good tutor. A good tutor should be patient. He should be empathetic to the duty. He should be knowledgeable. He should be confident, and then he should have good communication and interpersonal skills. Uh, apart from working in MRC, I've also observed Professor Kathleen O'Neill's classes. I've been observing her two subjects, which are these one, pre-calculus and business and applied calculus one. And what I've uh, observed, I learned, from her and uh, sitting in her class is uh, there's no difference in overall pedagogy of the teaching. And Professor Kathleen O'Neill is, is a wonderful teacher. She is very organized, she is very humble, she is very caring, and a wonderful human being inside, inside out. Her lectures are very concept focused and she, uh, now, this is what I really like about her classes, that she uh, always tries to give students a hands-on practice using different models in order to give students a better understanding about some, some of the difficult concepts. Uh, I've, I've totally enjoyed these things, and inspired by her, I have also bought some of the models to take with me back home and use them in my classes. And she is a big lover of questions. <laughs> she encourages questions a lot <clears throat> and believes that no question is a stupid question. <laughs> okay, so Tom, here's answer to your question that you asked me this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, from observing Professor Kathleen O'Neill's class and from working on with the students in MRC, what I have learned is students are same everywhere. <laughs> There's no big difference in their behavior. And with math, like uh, our student in Bacon, Pakistan have some problem. American students also have problems in math. And uh, if some students are really good at picking up the concepts, others may be struggling with basic math skills like Fractions, which is a universal problem, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the day, it's all about grades. We want our grades. <laughs> uh, 
apart from spending time here at JCCC, I've uh, also visited some resource center at other universities or uh, other uh, community colleges too. We have uh, visited uh, learning center or math resource center at uh, MCCC Longview, Maplewood, Park University, KU, UMKC, <clears throat> and um, what we have uh, found, or uh, what I have learned that, no matter, uh, they were all good, but the resource center that we have here at JCCC is one of the best, yes. <laughs> uh, in terms of services that it provides to students, in terms of space, in terms of uh, tutor diversity, in terms of number of uh, tutors that MRC has here, and also the dynamic administration that MRC has, yes. I've also attended uh, different conferences, and this is, this is my really big time learning, that no matter I am uh, a teacher in mathematics, I teach mathematics, but I, I still can do something for peace building through my teaching. I, I cannot share all my learnings that I have learned from these two conferences, but I think uh, this saying from Kofi Annan summarizes it the best way. Sorry, I'm, I'm really bad at, bad at it. <laughs> uh, I've also attended these two conferences. Now, I'm a researcher, I have a PhD in mathematics. I've been to different conferences which were very focused on some high, 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 higher level research. But about these two conferences, these two were very much uh, teaching focused uh, uh, conferences. I've, I've learned many new ideas to incorporate, uh, to incorporate in my teaching style. And there are a few things that I'm going to discuss with Director Quality Assurance before uh, really uh, adopting them in my teaching style. <clears throat> so uh, one of the big learning that uh, I had from uh, the conference, MTech conference in Denver, uh, was about this mindset called growth mindset. Um, this is a researcher, Carol Dweck, and she has uh, researched over uh, different decades uh, with different age group people. And what she find, found out that we can really grow our brain like we grow our muscles through different brain activities or through adopting different mindsets. And she came up with this idea that there are two types of mindset. One is growth, uh, sorry, one is growth mindset and other is fixed mindset. And in my next slide, I'm going to show the difference between the two. So she believes that, or she says that, the growth mindset it, uh, has, has very profound impact uh, on math learners. So she says that every time a student makes a mistake in mathematics, they form a new synapse. And what does a synapse do? Uh, in the nervous system, a synapse is a structure that permits a neuron or nerve cell to pass an electrical or chemical signal to another neuron. So she says, she says that mistakes are good. Do more of them. And this is the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Uh, about the tutor training, uh, I've learned that MRC focused on uh, content-based training only, and there was nothing much available on tutor pedagogy. So I've started asking questions to Brad that why there's nothing, and then we really jumped into researching uh, about tutor pedagogy for math tutors, and found nothing much until we visited MCC Maplewood and UMKC. And then we thought that we should really do something about this and we have started working on a tutor training uh, module based on growth mindset. So these were my perceptions about America. 
based on Hollywood movies and what I've been seeing on social media and electronic media or on print media, uh, that there would be spoiled kids in America. Nobody would real have t really have time to help you out. And people would be really rude. But I've found it the other ways. The kids here are uh, very well-mannered. Uh, like Imran said, that uh, we have seen very hospital and friendly people here. I remember in the uh, uh, starting days, we used to stand somewhere trying to figure out how, where, uh, which way should we take, where, where, should, where should we go? And somebody would stop by and said, are you looking for something? Do you need help? So these were all perceptions. There's nothing about this over here. I've met some wonderful people, made so many friends, and I'm really going to miss them. These are my little friends. These are Brett's kids, Ian and uh, Neil. By the way, Ian really likes me. <laughs> uh, th uh, this picture is from uh, MTech conference. I'm standing with the uh, office bearers of the International Math Committee. I'm, uh, I've become a member of this committee and we are working on something together. My mentor, I, I call, sorry, sorry Brett for this. <laughs> I call him Sindhi Manu, which means Sindhi people. The day he wore this traditional topi and ajrak. Of course, how can I <laughs> miss you, Professor Kathleen? So I'm, I'm really going to miss you all, uh, and thank you so much, everyone, and um, sorry to those whose picture I cannot find and <laughs> <laughs> upload uh, here, and I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful to all of you. These are some of the future endures that me and Brett are going to do. Uh, like I said already, that we are working to come up with a tutor training uh, manual, and Soon we'll, we'll be starting MRC at Chakkar IBA, and I should warn you, Brett, that you are, you are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and this is again from uh, MTech conference, the international office bearers. They have assigned me this, talk, uh, this task. So uh, I've talked about this, I think, with Brett, but I would also like to ask anyone in math division who would like to work with me on this project, I would be very, very happy to work on this project. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. And uh, this is all about early childhood education. Now we are going to talk about that's uh, the, I would say, and obviously all who are concerned with early childhood education will say this is the important area because after early childhood education, then all other areas come because then the children grow up and then they come into your hands, okay? <laughs> so, uh, in the beginning, like Dr. Tom mentioned about two goals, Based on those underst that understanding, while uh, navigating through the whole my learning process, I kept these two objectives in front of me. The first one is all about learning about the best practices in the field of early childhood education from this developed context. The second one, as such, there is no specific activity took place, but this was very much embedded while navigating through my learning process. This is our conceptual framework. Let me share one thing with you, that before coming to this place uh, with Dr. Strekalova, uh, I had uh, my correspondence via email to focus on. 
Like other field of subject, early childhood education is again a very vast area. So we have, we wanted to be focused so that we can achieve big things in limited amount of, in limited amount of time. So we, we had this conceptual framework and based on our correspondence, we concluded that what areas actually I would really like to learn most in that. So based on my primary role at Sakhar IBA, I focused on teacher preparation at university level, teachers practice at school level, because when we work with the teachers, they have to, they, obviously they will go in the school and they will work with young children. So it's necessary to have this uh, strong connections. The other, again, is very important, very related to teacher education, is the research in this area. So this is how we came up with this conceptual framework. And out of that framework, we, sorry, focused on this thing. Now the first area is uh, classroom observation and my participation also. So it was a semester long classroom observation and participation which had. I was able to uh, observe and participate in three courses. Course one is all, all about assessment, which was actually my primary area of interest to learn more about the assessment in early years, which was taught by Professor Thomas, Professor Rihanna Thomas. And uh, the other course is integrating the curriculum in early child education, which was taught by Dr. Strakalova. The third one has an interesting thing. It was actually not on the plan, but something interested interesting popped up and I picked up that opportunity. And this course was also taught by Professor uh, Dr. Uh, Strakalova. So I was able to participate uh, and observe these three courses. The best part of all these three courses is that whenever I uh, sat in the classroom, I really found insightful discussions taking place. The kind of activities and assignments they have tried to engage students in and most of the time students used to go to the field and they, come, they used to come back and share their observations and experiences. That has really helped me to reflect upon what are the practices there in our context taking place and how are these students observing and coming back. And they were trying to make connections with what learning they are taking from these courses and how can, when they will become the teacher, what will they do? So in a way, it was a two-way communication, not only just listening to what teachers there in the field doing, it is actually focusing on those children, what, how they are learning. I'm really thankful to these professors for providing me those, that opportunity. Whenever any topic comes under discussion, they have always asked me, what is happening in your context? Would you like to share? So in a way, we were actually trying to make connections with what are our practices there in Pakistan and what, and as my, some of my friends says, we found similarities and commonalities in some of the challenges. In, in the field of early childhood education. I'll be talking later a bit about that. The other is at school level. I shared my interest that uh, it was a kind of my dream to see the real school set up in USA. And they have fulfilled their dream also while supporting me and taking me uh, to these schools. Now the Early Childhood Development Center, I would say I have been, uh, I was actually fortunate enough to spend my time in two excellent early childhood education. One is at JCCC and other is at UMKC, for which I am really thankful to Claire from uh, JCCC and Polly from UMKC. I found both of them very welcoming, very supportive, and they have given me complete full space to whenever, whenever I want to go there, I, uh, I was able to spend time in the classroom, talking to the teachers, interacting with the children, engaging with some, in some of the activities with, the, with young children. And then uh, at JCCC, I was able to participate in the parent-teacher meeting also. Now, whatever I was doing, I was learning, I was getting uh, the experiences, every time I was able to reflect upon what am I actually learning? How will I be able to uh, implement those things in my context? And what actually is adding value to my learning? Those questions have really help, uh, helped me. I wanted to see a big picture of early childhood education based on the structure we have got in our context. When we say early childhood education or early childhood school, we have from three to eight years, till grade second or grade third also. That comes under the broader umbrella of early childhood education. So I was fortunate enough to visit these three schools 
And I was amazed to see how much resource rich environment children are having, though they are public schools. And I, many times I ask them that what else do they want? Because in, if I see in my context, public schools except Sakhar IBA, because Sakhar IBA is a unique uh, public uh, sector where actually they uh, have provided a lot of resource rich environment to the children, whereas generally this does not happen. So it was kind of eye opener for me how children, a lot of interaction among teachers and children we have seen, number of resources were there, and lots of ideas for what kind of learning environment should be for these children. I have actually learned about that. <laughs> then, this excitement task, that research. I have shown my interest to, uh, while my discussion with Dr. Uh, Strekalova that I want to actually engage myself in some kind of research for early child education in, in, in this field. So I shared what actually I have already conducted in my context on uh, nurturing creativity in early years. So now in this limited amount of time, this was not possible to replicate the same thing or doing the same thing. So she suggested me that because it involves a lot of uh, research ethics and protocol to save the time and utilize the time in uh, terms of quality, Let's change the perception. We will be working on creativity, but with a different question. So we started looking at the content, what was all available. We were not aware that how many universities we will be able to do. Otherwise, I think we would have thought of many times to begin this work after doing, completing. We hugged each other. These many universities we have actually explored. 665 state universities, only state universities, we looked at the website and found that how many universities actually offer early childhood education program. We found that 58% of this number, which is our, according to our calculation, it is 387 universities who offer early childhood education program uh, to the undergraduates. I mean, we were focusing on only undergraduate programs. We want to make it as specific as possible. We came across types of courses they offer, numbers of courses they offer but we wanted to uh, remain focused on that creativity, so then we found how many universities actually offer courses on creativity. You can see the number 138 courses total we found, which means 138 universities offer these courses. And then the major uh, part of this research actually came. What would we like to see in that? So we picked up all the course descriptions available on their website, and then we analyzed. Based on what? Because when we were actually looking at this, we had our already uh, 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 theoretical framework developed, which has helped us to look at what these universities are actually offering in this teacher education program, preparing those teachers to go and help those children develop their creativity or nurture their creativity. Most Mostly we found that the creativity is associated with arts, whether it's performing art or visual arts. Generally in the descriptors, uh, course description we found that. And then uh, the missing part was social, sociocultural understanding of creativity. Now we are at this stage, we have collected the data, analyzed the data, literature review is in process, and uh, Almost all the work is, I mean, towards coming to an end when it will come in front uh, of everyone as form of our paper soon, hopefully. So that's going to be a big achievement of uh, being here in this uh, semester, staying. But uh, basically, it's going to be uh, an honor for me to have my publication with uh, a university professor at USA. So thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Strekalova. Dr. Uh, Professor Rihanna Thomas was, a, uh, in a way, we can say that she was my co-mentor as well. So I have worked very closely with Rihanna and with, uh, because uh, formally we call Dr. Strekalova Katya. So it's very easy to uh, pronounce her name. She has allowed us to say so. Additional learning experiences uh, took place while attending conferences and meetings. Now the first peace building conference 
first conference is talked about peace building conference. Now generally peace building, peace building has directly nothing to do with early childhood education because the way the, the discussions were taking place over there, it is a big concept. But I reflected upon how can I bring this to early childhood education. Now when we look at early childhood education from the broader perspective, early childhood education is all about human development. It's not only about child development because that's the significant age range, one of the phases of human life, which is all about human development. So in our curriculum, in our program, in our day-to-day -day interactions with, with young children, in early childhood, in the classroom, you will find that, yes, the concept of helping, caring, sharing, playing together, and uh, trying to be more helpful to everyone already are there. So now the shift was that doing without knowing, I mean from doing without knowing to now, knowing and doing. So that was a big shift from the perception of taking peace building. And then there were conferences, Macy and uh, I attended this uh, a workforce summit conference that was basically for early childhood education. And then we had weekly meetings uh, with uh, ECE professors, Dr. Strekalova and uh, Rihanna Thomas, Professor Thomas. We used to share our experiences in from my context and from, uh, they would like, they have always shared with me what are the practices here other than what I have been observing in their classroom and some of the questions I, they, I used to ask them and they were trying to satisfy me. And then we had a group meetings also. Now, th that writing group meeting is something significant I have found at UMKC, which is that either the graduate of a master's program or the faculty at UMKC, if their papers are in process or in progress, there's a group, they share their draft with everyone, everyone reads that and give their feedback for the improvement. Now that is something which actually promotes uh, a very much research uh, uh, based or you can say uh, it, it promotes that environment in the, in the university, in the institution. I would personally feel that all the institution, all the education ins institutions should have that kind of groups and that kind of meetings which actually promotes and as, uh, as well as motivate other to come and contribute in the field of research and publications. Other than we have visited Park University and University of Kansas, there also I got opportunity to talk to the ECE professors and in, in, in that discussion we were able to actually have cross-cultural ECE comparison challenges. Now challenges are we found that like uh, uh, getting good quality early childhood edu educators or uh, motivated teachers, quality educational or teacher education program for early childhood education Perception, perceiving ECE teachers not more than babysitters or something like that, they are common here and very much common there. So, but the good part is that this, in this developed context, there are so many platforms where actually the, the I would say, a, a kind of uh, improvement, I mean, uh, a journey towards improvement is taking place. In NACI conference, I found the best part was, other than the, uh, the sessions I have attended, that uh, a grand uh, display and the exhibition of the resources by different uh, companies. That has really helped me a lot to know about number of resources, number of, uh, 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 I mean, companies are working in this field. Now this is actually the implementation after my, this learning process. So these are the areas where actually I will be working when I'll go back to my institution. As I said, the teaching of undergraduate program is my primary responsibility there. So the time I've spent in their classrooms, I've learned from those experiences. I will be using all my learning, all my experiences while teaching those students over there because in some of the activities, I, I myself participated and did those things, which has really helped me in gaining first-hand experiences. Strengthen, strengthening our own undergraduate EC program. Now, at the moment, we don't offer early childhood education as a major program in under, undergraduate program. We have only one of the courses, uh, like other courses for, in that program. Now, after getting all this information while doing the research, and particularly from UMKC, they have shared with me. Now, in future, we would like to actually offer the, uh, the program, which will actually be, maybe, if possible, we would offer 
major in early childhood education program. Then ECE Resource Center. This is another big uh, uh, thing which will take place. And for ECE resources, I have written in the bracket, for which I would like to say again thanks to Claire Eney, who is actually has been helping us uh, to get resources which she, uh, she has actually shared with Sakhar IBA. And we have assured her that these resources will be used by our teachers and our children. And, and we all are very much, I mean, uh, thrilled to get all these resources. And in future also, we would like to get connect with uh, other fellows of early childhood education here to get more resources. This is one more uh, expectation is that to design EC certificate course for the teachers uh, there, for the pre-service teachers, and for those who are already uh, teaching in our context. And then strengthening our or Sakhar uh, IBA is managing, I guess, six to seven community schools, and all those community schools have their own early childhood education settings there. So after getting this learning and obs classroom observations and visiting real settings, that those learning will help me to strengthen the already currently uh, the schools, early childhood education, those are program running over there. And in that relation for professional development of those teachers. People whom I got connected with and would like to continue to learn from them if they would also like to continue to <laughs> help me. Without asking them, I have just assuming, I'm assuming that they will definitely would like to continue with me. So I would like to, and my apology if I have forgotten any name because I, the name just quickly came to my mind was that they are the one, Dr. Dr. Strekalova, Rihanna Thomas, Claire, Diana Hurst, she's also from JCCC, Polly, Dr. Emmy, Dr. Chona, Dr. Eva, Greg, they all are. And my sincere thanks to, obviously, the management of Sakhar IBA, Professor Nisar Ahmed Siddiqui, Dr. Sher, for each and every, at each and every step he has helped. And even for getting these EC resources, he was very helpful. Dr. Tom, Jeanette, Farrell, Claire, Dr. Strekalova, Rihanna, Polly, all my Pakistani friends with whom I have uh, interacted with, and of course, US State Department to create this opportunity for us. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming here today. Um, yeah, it's just a couple of more minutes. I know you're thinking about your warm beds. <laughs> yes, uh, I can see some people dozing off, but that's okay. <laughs> right, so um, this is Saran Fatma Maiman, um, Sakhar IBA, lecturer English at Sakhar IBA. Uh, and I'm here to learn the, I was here, I am here, I don't know. <laughs> so I was here to learn learning center pedagogies uh, and I was working in the writing center of JCCC with Dr. Catherine Byrne. So the writing center, it's a free student and community support center created to assist writers with reviewing, refreshing, and upgrading their writing skills. These are some uh, pictures of the writing center. I know it's a little boring, you've been hearing this, but let's just quickly get through it. These are the services that Writing Center at JCCC provides. It's um, tutorials, one-on-one -on -one, um, tu tutoring services. Um, peer tutors are there, we have faculty, we have assessment quiz. There are software that uh, students can come in and use. There are many online resources. We have more than 100 handouts in the Writing Center and on JCC website that students can uh, take help from. Uh, we have a grammar hotline. If you have any questions, call our grammar hotline and one of the tutors over there is gonna take up the call and answer your question. There are credit and non-credit courses that we offer and um, of course now, recently, we have just started our online tutoring as well. Writing Center is a novel concept for Pakistan. To be honest, I had never heard about it. Um, I have done an MPhil in English, and throughout my uh, years of study, I never knew that 
a writing center could exist in a university or a college. So it was very new. I thought that I was very scared, to be honest. I was happy that I'm going to USA, but I was scared, scared to death, because I was like, what if I don't know the answer to something that the student is going to ask me? So I had this, this fear. Uh, that was majorly because I never knew anything about writing centers. Currently, in Pakistan, there are only two universities that have writing centers, and Sakharibia is going to be the third university that we are going to, that is going to have a writing center. Those two universities are LUMS and IBA Karachi. So ladies and gentlemen, I have learned in detail about all these things during my stay here at JCC. I was not observing classes. I was not goofing around. I was in the writing center. <laughs> um, no offense. <laughs> so I was in the writing center, and um, I was there doing things, learning things, hands-on practice, tutoring, sitting at the desk, logging in students, logging them out, um, um, shadowing Dr. Catherine everywhere she went. And I remember the very first time I tutored, I thought I was not ready because I thought I would never be ready to tutor. But uh, it, this was Monday right after we have a conference here um, and we had an orientation. And so next day I'm there in the writing center and Gwen comes to me and is like, Sir Han, are you ready for a, writing se uh, for a tutoring session? There's a student waiting for you right there. I was like, uh, me? You want me to tutor? She was like, yeah, go ahead. And so I went in, and it was good. It was not as bad as I expected, but it was actually good. So I, I was relieved. And um, so all these things, the infrastructure, the resources, um, tutoring, how a tutoring session is conducted, what are the nitty gritties of it, how to start it, how to move on, your body language, how do you sit, how do you approach, what do you do, all those things. And apart from that, the things in the administration part, where you do log keeping and program review and many things that we don't like, but all those administrative things. So today in this presentation, I am I'm moving very, very quick, trying to stay in those 10 minutes. I have divided my presentation in these three major categories, academic lessons that I've learned, apart from all the details of the, the ones that I just shared, the social aspects of me being here and what lies ahead. Let's start with the academics. The very first thing was, what is the role of tutor? What is he supposed to do? Is it collaboration or is it direction? Because for me, as a teacher, it has always been an authoritative position to go in class, you are the queen, it's your class, do whatever you wanna do. But when you're in a tutoring session, it's not about telling the student to do what you want him to do. It's about controlling that urge to correct things. And, and I love this part where I actually overcame this, uh, th this urge. And it's, it's more about collaboration. And this is one of our, the research topics that Dr. Catherine and I have started doing. The next thing that I learned was writing center helps you fix the paper. So when, it's, when a student comes in for a tutoring session, this is um, a, a form that a student, tutee and tutor have to fill. And it's very clearly written there that I understand that writing center tutors will not proofread my paper. They are not going to do anything. It's me who's gonna do it. So it's me as in the tutee. So we are there to help, we are not here to fix. And we have seen many students coming in like in MRC where they're like, I have to turn in this paper in like 15 minutes. Help me out. We're like, okay, calm down, sit down, let's talk about it. <laughs> well, how many grammar Nazis do we have here? <laughs> Ta -da! Well, grammar is a lower order concern. This is one of the biggest lessons that I've learned. Well, um, in a country like ours, where English is our fourth or maybe fifth language, and well, it's the official language of Pakistan, so no. I don't know. Well, there's Urdu, that's the official language, then there are regional languages, then there's an academic language, that is English, and so there are so many languages that a student has to learn. And in all that, we believe that the one who knows English should know the grammar, because it's all about the grammar, you have to have a perfect grammar. Well, yes, in academic writing you do, but still, when a student comes in and you're doing a tutoring session, there are higher order concerns, and grammar is actually a lower order concern. We can fix that later, but first we need to work on Hawks. The next lesson was we value process over product. It actually means that we are here to produce better writers, not better papers. 
and we want to do what we want to do is we want to have better thinking through writing through better writing so it's all about the process it's 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 the journey it's not the destination well for students it's actually destination always it's the grades that matter but this is the philosophy of writing center that you always have to value what you're learning in the process. Well, this summarizes all my anxiety. It's okay to not to be an expert. Um, Brett Bedford Guide for Writing Tutors uh, says that even the best writers frequently consult a handbook. No one knows all the answers by heart. So what we expect from tutors is to be familiar with all the resources that are available in the Writing Center, the handouts, the reference books, computer software manuals, everything. JCC website actually tells us that the guidelines that tutors live by, the tutor establishes and maintains rapport, the writer does the work, always. Higher order concerns come before the lower order concerns, and tutors do not have to be experts. Um, looking at all this, being spending my time in a writing center, I learned that writing is a skill. So it can be learned, like every other skill. Like you can learn how to sketch, you can learn how to paint, you can learn other things. So, so is the case with writing. And, and writing has a value beyond classroom. And how, why do I say that? Because when tutors are there in the writing center who have better writing skills, they model the worth of writing to all the students who are coming into a writing center. And tutoring leaves a lifelong impact on the tutors. And, and this is a research that has been, there, there was a big project that uh, many people kept talking about in IWCA, and they were telling me that th there's been a research where for 10 years of maybe more, the, the researchers have looked upon those tutors, af what happened after 10 years, where are they now? What, how did tutoring help them out? I conducted two interviews of tutors and, and they told me how tutoring has actually helped them in their life. So the Writing Center benefits tutors, tutees, and the college as a whole. And that's the best learning, I believe. I went to some Writing Center conferences, uh, uh, IWCA in Denver, 2016. It did not snow when I was there. <laughs> uh, and we have Greater Kansas City Writing Center's project, conference and workshops that is um, organized here at JCC. Attended both of them and learned a lot of things. Uh, that is the keynote speaker at IWCA, Paula Lipsy. We have uh, my very own Dr. Catherine Byrne. Um, that was IWCA Denver. So I also visited some other writing centers, um, Kansas University, UMKC, Park, uh, MCC Longview and Maple Woods, Brett and Zerka took me with them when they were going to visit it. Thank you guys. And But what I came to know is ours is the best. <laughs> Honestly, yes. And that is not just because I'm here or Catherine is here. It's, it's majorly because uh, the services that we provide are huge. The services that I showed in the very first slide, not, not many writing centers provide as many services as we do. It is usually either online tutoring or one-on-one -on -one tutoring, and majorly by appointments, no drop-ins. So there were many, many comparisons that, that I did, and I believe that JCC has the best writing center here. Also went to some peace building conferences, um, and we learned a lot of things. One of the major takeaways from there is peace education can be incorporated in any discipline. We have five major disciplines at Sakhar IBA, and and we can incorporate peace building or peace, peace education in all those disciplines. I have already thought of some of the uh, activities that I'd be, I'd be doing in my classes, I'll be telling my um, colleagues. Um, there was one best thing I would like to mention was uh, peace teaching through entrepreneurship. So that we can have, we always have entrepreneurship, uh, big uh, setups or uh, startups like that. There was, a, there was an amazing idea where you could actually tell your students to start up a business that has something to do with peace. They could sell anything that has anything to do with peace. Um, this was done in one of the colleges and, and this, one of the students actually made an air conditioner. And why did he do that? Because he believed if there is a good AC, uh, people are not gonna fight at home and so there'll be peace. <laughs> so it could be anything actually. Um, the social aspects, there were many of them. Um, 
First of all, diversity and inclusion in this college has been, has been wonderful. I've seen family life in USA. I've, I've met Muslim community, went to some uh, uh, mosques. My hijab has been my identity because many people have been coming up to me and appreciating me for that. And I thought people here would be Islamophobic, but they were not. Uh, I, I thought that when I go to New York, um, people are going to give me looks, they're gonna stare at me, call names, whatever, but it did not happen. And, and I really liked it, the way people at JCC and around accepted me the way I am. I remember Karen, the very first day, she, she looked at me and she said, I love your scarf, I love the color of it, I just love it, you look so beautiful. It has been from day one. And I uh, went to an American wedding, thank you Jeanette for taking us there. Uh, visited a church, social gatherings at some colleagues' places, went to Vince Miller's house, we went to Keith, Keith Geeky's house, we went to um, Catherine's house. I tried some new food, not much, but I did a little. We went to Chipotle. <laughs> and it snowed today, so I'm so happy. I was like, it had a question mark. Is it gonna snow or not? It did. And the best thing was people of America want to know about us. I'm saying this because um, I had a talk of 10 minutes at uh, JCC. It was a part of the peace building thing that they do here. And I was representing Pakistan and, and I spoke about the perception versus reality, the women of Pakistan perception versus reality. People listened and they appreciated. And Jeanette sent me an email, she forwarded me an email that a student had sent her and said that thank you for telling us, thank you for showing that side of Pakistan. So I was glad that the people wanted to know. What lies ahead from here is, well, majorly three, three portions. Writing Center community, I want to be an active member of Writing Center community. I want to have IWCA membership, which we already have, right, Catherine? Yes. Um, I want to have my CRLA certification as a tutor, and then maybe um, when my writing center is established, I would like my center to be certified. I want to reach up to other writing centers in Asia and, and collaborate with them. Um, also in Pakistan, so the very two centers that I mentioned, I'm going to go talk to them and we are going to see things. The research has already started. We're working on directive and non-directive tutoring with uh, Dr. Catherine Byrne. We are going to look at tutor's role. We will also be looking at writing center across cultures, writing, center, writing across curriculum, and there are many, many more topics to research. But the biggest task is to plan, design, establish, and start a writing center at Sakhar IBA. Majorly, one of the biggest challenges that I'm anticipating is to train teachers or students, whosoever we are hiring after discussions with the administration there as tutors, because tutoring is different. It's different than anything. And like I said, I never knew about tutoring, so nobody, I think, back there knows. And in all this, I would always be seeking guidance and support from Dr. Catherine Byrne and Johnson's County Community College uh, Writing Center. In a nutshell, from all, all, all that, I've met some great people, Catherine in capitals, Tom, Jeanette, Farrell, Karen Davis, thank you, Karen. Karen LaMartina, she's here in the nursing department, peace building colleagues at NOVA, Mubin Bhai and family, Homa, she was our beautician actually, she kept us, me and Zerka, <laughs> she, she made us look good. Samira, thank you. Thank you for being there for us. And, and Candlewood Sweets staff, they are very nice people. We stayed there. We visited some great places from Flint Hills to DC. Thank you, Farrell, for taking us to Flint Hills. It was beautiful. In a nutshell, I've spent a lifetime here. It's like I've seen, I've seen Eid, a very big, big thing in, in Muslim community. I've seen Muharram. It's, again, a, a religious thing. We have had birthdays, my birthday, Cheryl's, Imran, we've, we've had many birthdays. I've went to Bollywood movies with Catherine. I've seen pain, I've been to an emergency department for, for a sight pain. We've seen sorrow, um, Suresh Fak's father unfortunately left us, so we've seen sorrow here. And I'm looking forward to the Christmas party that we have on 9th, so it's, it's like all the things together. We have been loved here and we've been welcomed and these are some of the beautiful, oh, Jeanette, you are there, right behind those. <laughs> um, again, Jeanette's picture ran away. So that's Mubin Bhai and family here in the corner. We met Claire, very, very, very sweet. Uh, Professor Sabato, Feral, uh, and these are some 
some gifts that uh, Sarish Fakabasi presented to these people. And oh, look at that, there's Sindhi Maru's there. <laughs> so I have visited many, many places. It was wonderful. Overall, I really want to thank State Department for, for doing this, for letting us be here. I want to thank Sakharaibi for choosing me to be here, for thinking that I'm eligible enough to be here. But overall, I'm in majorly. Thank you, JCC. Thank you. We'll, we'll miss you. Thank you. Hello everyone. I'm a traditional teacher, <laughs> so I don't have PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, so um, U.S. is like second home to me. So. Um, Many of you know that I went to Michigan State and I did my PhD in Michigan State. Um, very warm people and very cold area. Um, so when I came here, um, I lost my luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so there many interesting things happened, you know, because of because I lost my luggage. So I was in. Uh, so I had some of the clothes in my carry-on luggage. So I was in like dress, pants, and shirt with chapels. <laughs> and <laughs> and so then I requested Janet to take me to some shoe shops, and then so. And I'm a little too picky, so then we went to one shop, and then we went to another shop. And then Janet said, okay, I'm going to read my book in my car, and you go find your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay, now mom is angry, so I have to pick some shoes. <laughs> uh, I'm not just saying, joking, like Janet, Janet, really has a, like a, she's like a motherly spirit. And Tom is more like fatherly spirit. <laughs> and Ed is my big brother, my elder brother. Although he has not, he has not learned that, that in the Pakistani culture, elder brothers has lots of responsibilities. <laughs> And somebody probably is telling him, and now he's a little bit backing off. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to briefly talk about main points, what, what are the takeaways, and then how I'm going to implement some of the things at Sakara IBA. Uh, so I've been working with Ed uh, at Educational Technology Center back in Pakistan. I'm director of distance education, and distance education is uh, something very new in Pakistan. Uh, Higher Education uh, Commission is uh, recently they are supporting universities to offer courses and programs in distance education. And the reason is we had a lots of enrollment in the programs called private education. So private education programs are you study on your own, it just appear, um, appear in the exam, and that is usually annual exam. So if it is like two-year master's degree, you appear in a first-year annual exam, and then if you pass it, then you appear in a final year or second-year annual exam, and if you pass, you get master's degree. Uh, but there were lots of issues with this, and then more than 50% basically enrollment was in those private programs. So there were huge quality issues, and there were lots of concerns from 
organizations, companies, corporations, that people just show up with lots of degrees, but they really don't have knowledge, they don't have the skills. Um, so this is a Higher Education Commission's initiative to offer, the idea is that distance education is, uh, can probably offer better quality compared to those private uh, programs. Now most of the distance education in Pakistan that the mainstream universities are offering is hybrid um, courses and hybrid program. That means 50% um, face to face and 50% online. And um, that's the requirement from Higher Education Commission. And Higher Education Commission is a regulatory body in Pakistan, so you cannot bypass Higher Education Commission. Uh, I have learned a lot working with aid, um, mostly about online education, but since the part of our programs, like 50% is online, and then I'm looking for forward to future, which is going to be lots of online education in Pakistan. Because as we see, online education is future of, future of education. The way technology is growing, the way technology is developing. So, and my colleagues have been sharing like math resource center, writing resource center, you know, student support center. One of the things that I liked a lot here at JCC is that uh, uh, academic support division. We don't have this kind of unit. So first recommendation, I'm gonna make Sakharaibi and we have started discussing with Director Siddiqui and Dr. Sher uh, that we should have a ac academic support unit at Sakaraibi. And academic support unit can actually provide support to faculty uh, when we are developing online education courses or you know, bringing technology, um, faculty's professional development, and then it can actually s support students as well. Uh, unfortunately, we have one of the very high drop dropout ratios. If my numbers are correct, uh, Dr. Sher, it was like 33 percent something. 53. We have a huge dropout ratio, so there is a need. There is a lot of need to support our students, and I think I visualize that this academic support unit is going to help faculty and students uh, if we develop this structure. Uh, it will, it will have a very um, profound impact. So that would be my one recommendation, and, and we are fortunate that Director Siddiqui is always open to new ideas. So we have already started discussing about it. Um, many other things, like another thing that we have a um, free Moodle source we, we are using, it has the LMS, but faculty is not really, especially the faculty is using face-to-face -face classes, not using it. So, but LMS, as I have observed at JCC and from my experience at Michigan State, um, LMS is a great support for faculty and for students. Um, and one of the reasons, like LMS is available 24 hours to faculty and students. They can log in any time, whatever resources are there, they can access any time. Teachers are available at you know, a particular time. So another recommendation that I'm gonna make to Sakhar IBA, and I'm a little over ambitious that I'm, I think I can make that recommendation to Higher Education Commission of Pakistan as well, that they provide a LMS pro form one of the established perform like being used in USA like D2L, Canvas, or uh, Blackboard, Pakistan universities. And that will be a great, and say, technology is not an issue now in Pakistan, and the access thanks to Chinese technology, and they are our neighbors. So it is even cheaper in Pakistan. Uh, so that's not a big issue. So if there is LMS uh, and that will be a great support. So I don't know, I'll be recommending Sakhar IBA and we'll be taking to HEC as well and we'll see what happens. 
Uh, lots of other technology being used at JCC, uh, like recording studios, Zoom web conferencing. So Ishfaq Abbasi has been already experiencing that. I think that's going to be a lots of help. And the, the plans we have for futures. One of the strategic advantage Sakhar IBA has, that Sakhar IBA is in the North Sin, and Sakhar IBA has community colleges in different other parts of Sin. So that means we have a physical presence in other different parts of the province where we can actually uh, develop distance learning centers and we can offer lots of distance learning programs. So the technology like uh, recording studios, Zoom web, you know, conferencing, um, green screen recording, light board recording, these, gonna, these are all going to be lots of support. And one of the stories we, we visited yesterday and Director Siddiqui was really excited. So probably at least one of the studios we're going to establish at Sakhar IBA. For me, it has been a lot of learning. Um, online learning, uh, I took a couple of courses in my PhD studies, online courses. Um, but what I've learned m more um, professionally is about community colleges. When I was at Michigan State University, I never had a chance to visit a community college. We visited several uh, schools, elementary schools, middle schools, you know, high schools, but I never had a chance to visit a community college. Uh, and community colleges, the idea of community colleges is very um, government, government of Pakistan and government of Sindh is a lot interested in the idea of community colleges. And the rationale is same that everybody, every graduate from high school cannot make to four-year schools. And they don't want to go to four-year schools because they cannot afford, so there, there needs to be an alternative. So um, I think I will learn a lot not about community colleges. Um, so that will be a, that is my overall, in, if I say in nutshell, uh, learning. Personally, I have been bothering lots of people. Um, Ed and I have been hanging out a lot. <laughs> in fact, Tom shared a, a photo of us today, and I showed Ed and said, how we look here? <laughs> a big brother and, and a younger brother, how we look here? Uh, but we have a very interesting photo. So uh, Dr. Keith, Dr. Ed, and myself, we went to an online learning conference in Orlando. And we made several, many photos. And one of the photos is that three of us are making selfie in the same photo. <laughs> 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 it couldn't be nerdier than that, like three people. The same for they're taking, they're making their own selfie. So thanks a lot, everybody, uh, everybody, the support, the help you provided, the love, the care you provided. Uh, thank you very much, and looking forward to interacting with you, seeing you in in future. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you, um, all of you, for sharing all of that. I, we, we have some time. We're, we're running late, but we'll, we will take questions. So um, we have some mics here if you don't have your teacher voices. Uh, any questions for any of our uh, presenters?
like to share something um, like surhan said it it's very difficult to choose the best memory we have uh, some some of the wonderful memories that we have had here but uh, i remember uh, after trump won i know no politics here but uh, i'm i'm saying this after trump won um, on the first juma at the mosque uh, when we went there there was some pastor from a church he came along with his uh, wife and daughter to show support to us and to say that we are with you and on the very same day uh, somebody left a note outside the mosque and saying that we are with you so i think i think this is uh, a wonderful thing that i'm going to cherish and remember for a very very long time i remember that day very well because i was with uh, dr bano and she was extremely gracious in a comedy in in congratulating those guests and you were the wonderful representative of i was song. emotional i was crying at the moment too yes Th that was something um, out of this world for me any others and i uploaded the video of uh, his speech on my facebook page and uh, another thing is that i i visited i was in midway airport chicago so i saw a direction as, uh, that uh, there is a chapel in the airport so i i thought i have to take pictures and i'm going to show these pictures to my friend david but when i entered in the picture but i saw there is a corner is a reserved for the muslim prayers and we call it uh, musallu janamas i saw that corner and it was very amazing and uh, beautiful surprise for me so i performed the evolution and offer a prayer and i feel included in the community but i have to i can't decide which one is the best i'm going to remember these two the most um one was i was in the writing center and uh, one of the tutors had to leave since her shift was ending or something and um uh, she walked up to me and said sirhan there's a request for you that lady out there wants you to tutor her if you're free can you do that and i said of course i can and and i and i stood up and went there and i started a tutoring session it was it was one of the best it is one of the best memories the other thing is um i was in the clb building second floor uh, of clb building and there's a caretaker there he he looked at me smiled came to me and said dear sister i am very happy to see you working here we are very proud of you and and that was a moment i thought well thank you and and i didn't know what else to say but all i could do was smile and say thank you thank you so i think both of them are are my most precious memories i must say as a fellow pakistani who has had the privilege of studying in the united states and also being a professor here you each one of you represented the best of what our country has to offer and i am so very proud of each of you that you took this journey and renewed my faith in my homeland so thank you every each one of you including this young man here who has been and all of you are now part of my family so thank you so much thank you, you so much and thank you so my much life. Thank, thank you so much I would also like to share some of things because of uh, you know at times time constraint I was unable to talk about I was mainly focused on what actually the learning took place but other than these academic it was uh, less opportunities I get to get along with the group the way they have but uh, staying uh, at UMKC I also got chance to uh, attend some of the I would say what what are the practices here like one of the events at baby shower which was a new experience for me the way all gathered it was because in our context mostly women is there where you want to when you go and greet there i was looking around i didn't find anyone would be mother that whose baby shower is this i wasn't sure i asked some of the uh, one of the i mean uh, uh, i mean colleagues or there that who is the would be mother or a parent this is that gentleman 
I mean, that was a kind of something which was interesting at that time. I said, okay, Father, it is there. So it was something interesting for me to learn about. I, which I have never done, thanks, the thing which I'm going to share is I have never done an experience in my country is uh, using public transport. Here, it was a kind of, <laughs> she's laughing, because not only this uh, learning of early childhood education, she taught me how to use public transport here, Dr. Strykalova I'm talking about. Uh, in the initial week, she used to come with me to know that this is the bus stop, here you can read the timing. But you know the good part, even uh, while using this uh, public transport, that sometimes bus timings are not exactly the same what it is saying. It says it's delayed for three minutes, four minutes, 20 minutes. And I used to sit on the footpath and wait for the bus, which was, in that weather, it was pleasant. And I found something very interesting, that whosoever is passing by is looking at me, giving me a smile. Hi, good morning. Hi, have a good day. I said, this is something great, because it was something, a kind of welcoming. And if any, uh, I, I got opportunity, I'm now using these words, that to move around alone, and if I find, like, one of us, they say that they, they look at you with a kind of, uh, I mean, that gesture they give you that they really, they can help you if you need any help. So these are some of the things which I would like to take away. And uh, I, I'm, I will just conclude my this uh, talk that a very specific thing which I have seen here that nobody actually try to put you in that situation that which you make you feel awkward. I mean, you are free the way you want to carry yourself, the way, way you want to live, the way you want to dress up. It is something I am taking it very positive. That people have not actually laughed at someone, rather they have actually enjoyed the something, the, the talk or the event or something, is saying. not exactly at any person. So this is something very good. I will take away uh, with me, along with all my learnings. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Abbasi, would you like to share something? Uh, actually, I couldn't get the question. What was the question? So, uh, would, um, you, would you like to comment on uh, a, a favorite, a best memory of your experience you've had here? Uh, Yes, uh, there were a lot of uh, opportunities when we thought of that. Uh, uh, these are all the exciting uh, moments for us. But uh, on the whole, one of the things which I have started, uh, uh, I would say, preaching here, because the, that's uh, like the most. The way people had uh, interaction with the, even, even to the strangers. You know, the smiling face every now and again, uh, that was a, a really very attractive thing for me as, as, as a society of US. And when I am sharing these all things, because I, these, my colleagues are there still, they are to share these all experiences here in Pakistan, but I have started. One of the thing which I talked to uh, on Friday prayer this uh, week uh, with the, one of the Imam of our masjid, and he then uh, talked in front of the congregation. He, I told him that uh, the, the claims which are extremist people here in Pakistan make that, uh, okay, US has not a uh, uh, good, uh, good people uh, for Pakistan. I told them that in uh, whatever our religion is teaching us, indirectly, they are not the Muslims, but they are the people who are practicing these all things there. We have this smile, uh, smi uh, smiling face sort of a, a gesture for everyone to mingle with. Yes, that is part of our religious teaching. And I told them that this is all I observed there in US. So thanks to the uh, uh, Imam, and then he communicated the same thing in the congregation prayer of Friday in front of uh, hundreds of the audience who appreciated this all that, okay, the one aspect which we are familiar with uh, about uh, uh, US uh, people, that is uh, the negative one, but the one which I communicated them that was the positive one and people were very hard to believe this, that this was what which was uh, coming up from the Imam of the mosque for the US society. So that, 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 that's the very enormous thing which I have observed here. Well, thank you. It's, it's hard to, uh, you know, in my recent memory, I would say Kennedy suicide. I think that's one of the memories that I would, 
I have a huge fascination with uh, the space technology. And so this is so I spent a whole day went from Disneyland to the real world. Uh, that will be but yeah, there are lots of memories. Uh, one other memory actually uh, I was at the Park University and uh, that was the first day of the peace conference, peace building conference. And I forgot my cell phone uh, at the university. And I use cell phone as my GPS. So then I lost my way because I cannot come back overland. <laughs> thanks to over dependence to technology. I had my laptop with me, but there was no internet connection, so I cannot see my, you know, the map. So, Park is a very small, small town, so I just walked around and said, if I can find a coffee shop here, I can connect with the internet and then I can see, see the map. So, there is only probably one coffee shop, and that was closed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so then I went to a, a you know, restaurant cuisine and then uh, so the, the attendant she 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 asked me if I wanted to eat or something and so I said no I'm actually uh, I'm lost I, I find I need to find my way back to my home and he said where, where do you live I said in Poland she didn't know about it but she stopped everything <laughs> She went and asked somebody, and she, you know, she, mm, she, so she learned from him, and then she tried to explain to me. It was, uh, it was really simple, but the, the, the concern I saw in her, like, uh, you can see it in her face, and like, how passionate she was, she wanted to help you. So she asked me three, four times now, are you comfortable? Do you think you can get back home? Uh, I said, yes, I know. <laughs> Thank you. This, see, this is a, this human connection is sometimes, you, these are very profound things. Any other questions? I know we're running late. Yes, Richard. Uh, question and a, a comment. Um, you know, we have, 22 of these partnerships with Pakistan and nine with Afghanistan we've had over the last several years. Um, and so many, many cohorts have come, maybe 400 or more. So imagine this experience replicated 20 some times over several semesters. Uh, the numbers of communities in this um, country that have been um, informed about Pakistan and the number of Pakistanis that have been informed about our communities. It's quite a remarkable enterprise. And you know, we at State are just so happy that you're all part of it. And we thank you for any and all roles that you've played and that you've played. And I think the last few minutes are particularly poignant. You know, we've set these projects up under the rubric of four uh, pillars or four objectives and goals. One is faculty development, the opportunity to come and study and learn. Uh, uh, the other, another one is curriculum development, to bring home some of the newest, latest, and greatest. Another one is research, opportunity to access our databases and open up avenues of research and collaboration. And the fourth one is mutual understanding. And I, I always get mad because we always say, and number four, mutual understanding. And I would just love, I really look at it that way. Mm -hmm. I think that that should be number one. Mm -hmm. And I think that the facts, the figures, the data is all so important, but nothing can really top what you've just uh, described in the last 10 minutes. And so I think that, that really from now on I'm probably going to say we have four objectives. Number one is mutual understanding, <laughs> and number four is faculty development. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Any other? Well, I uh, before uh, before we go, um, I would like to. The pictures have reminded me that there are some people that I overlooked. Uh, Claire is Claire still here? Here. Claire, yes, thank you, Claire. Claire Amy, uh, as manager of our child development center here, and she stepped in uh, to help out with uh, Shiroz at the beginning and instrumental in this donation of material. So thank you, thank you, Claire. 
uh, uh, Sri Liker, thank you for taking them and showing them Kansas City. Uh, and Farrell Janab, uh, who works in international education, and gave them the great pleasure of going out to the Flint Hills and spending some time on a ranch. And she also uh, was part of the transportation to take them out to the Islamic Center on, on a regular basis. So thank you, Farrell. And Mr. Youngblood, Steve Youngblood, who is the evaluator. So I hope you are noting all of the wonderful things that they have shared with you. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, Steve. And, and thank all of you for coming. Uh, I hope the snow is gone and you make your way home safely. Thank you again. <laughs>